Hey guys, how's it going? So, this will be the first part in three uh, videos. And it's basically my yearly wrap-up and goals and so on and so forth. So, to start with, as the title will most likely say, this is going to be my year wrap-up. Um, and I'm going to do it with the background of Gauntlet because that's, like, the best background for whatever reason. Now, first got to figure out... Don't want to be the Valkyrie wizard. I already did the elf. I can't do the necromancer yet. Worry I'm going to be Valkyrie. Swift melee fighter with strong defense can stand her ground against any foe. Valkyrie. Fuck yeah. Let's do it. Oh god, I'm, I'm too poor to get this awesome shit. Oh man. 75, holy poop. Mmm. She want to- No, I don't want to- No, hang on. Increase move speed and attack speed. Oh, maybe. Nah, we're gonna get this one. Yeah, let's in let's increase my speed and stiff. Ah, oh, nice helmets. Damn, girl, what happened to your face? I just r looked at it. What'd you do to your face? You look like you're blind in one eye. Oh my god, I can change my cape. How flippin' cool. Okay, cool. So we're I'm ready now. Um, I gotta figure out how to play as her because I don't think I ever really. Ah, I see. So it's pretty much the same. Okay. Anyways, this is going to be a little weird because I have um, my notes to the left of me and my screen is a little more to the right. So, to start with, uh, let's talk a little bit about my K-dramas and stuff. Um... This astral manifestation of my powers is I'm gonna skip this cutscene, we've already done this. Um, so anyways, for my K-dramas slash Taiwanese dramas, um, I'm gonna first start by giving you guys my top five from five to one, uh, and then I'll give you my least favorite one. I'm ready. I'm ready to battle. So, uh, the fifth one in my top five is Pinocchio, which, um, uh, honestly, I don't think that it came out this year. It totally could have. Oh yeah, it's it is. Who is your king? Who is my king? Uh, anyways. So, uh, Pinocchio is number five on my tops. I, again, I don't remember if it came out this year or if it was last year. But this year I basically rewatched a lot of K-dramas. Um, there weren't too many that I was very interested in this year, unfortunately, so I didn't actually watch too many of them. I'm I usually go pretty K-drama crazy. I love K-dramas. Uh, so Pinocchio is kind of the story about this girl who... Uh, she, like, becomes a reporter, from what I can remember. And, uh, I don't know, some stuff happens. I'm, I'm honestly gonna be really bad at describing these. Whoops. I didn't exactly mean to get that, but anyways, um, I'm gonna be really bad at describing these because it's been a while since I've watched Pinocchio, but from what I remember, she's like a journalist person, and there's this other dude who's a journalist, and I don't really like him that much, honestly, as an actor or as a character. Dang, yo, I'm strong. Uh, hey, you fuck off. So, anyways, stuff happens. Obviously, some romance is gonna bloom, and like it's pretty cool. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a really good K drama though. I do recommend that one, for sure. Uh, the next one is a Taiwanese drama, and it's called When I See You Again. I forgot I was an elf for a second. Oh shit. Uh, when I See You Again is about this dude who is like really kind of nerdy and. Not super good looking, and he had this really good friend in his small little town, and um, he fell in love with her, but for whatever reason, it just didn't work out. Like, he was too scared, or he felt like he needed to be better, or something along those lines. Uh, I don't, again, I don't exactly remember what happened, but um, he ends up coming back to the town that he grew up in with her. <gasps> hey, what's up? What's up, yo? I'm gonna kick your butt. You gonna die. I'll kill you. There you go, I did it. Yay! Um, so, anyways, he ends up going back to the little town, and I don't know if I want to open that yet. 
and maybe I do. I don't know. I think I might want to. So he ends up going back to this little town and he meets her again, but she doesn't really remember him. I mean, she does, but, um, I mean, he looks like super different now. So it's not so much that she doesn't remember him. It's more just that he's a completely different type of person, even in his personality. Like he, before he was like very timid and kind of awkward and everything and now he's like more confident and he's beautiful and all this other stuff and so it, it, she doesn't end up liking him especially since the last time that she saw him she's had some bad run-ins with dudes and whatnot so she just doesn't believe in it as much like love and stuff so it, it's a really interesting drama um and that one oh god i fucking love taiwanese dramas too like k dramas are awesome but taiwanese dra dramas like Taiwanese dramas do something to, like, really boost it. Oh, fuck that. They just do something that really boosts it a little more. And I don't know exactly what it is, but it's, like, K-dramas on crack. I don't have another key. I need another key. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe it'll be that way. But what's this way? What's around this other corner? I don't remember these maps. Anyways, so, uh, number three on my list is Love Myself For You, which has the same male actor. His name is Jasper Liu, I think is how you pronounce it. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, there's nothing really over here. Oh, well. Oh, maybe I'm gonna need that soon, though. Um, and with that one, it's about this girl who is very, very, very career-driven. She wants to be the best chef that she can possibly be and she also wants to eventually own the restaurant that she's working for or open one of her own so oh shit that hurt thanks yo oh fuck you gonna die fuck you oh damn dude i'm gonna die uh there's no chicken here is there well i'm gonna get this guy first it's very difficult being the Valkyrie instead of getting my distance. Um, so anyway, she meets this guy, and she doesn't know that he is actually technically in charge of that restaurant. Um, just because he's, like, the son of the guy who does own the restaurant. Can I go back through here? I can't. Fuck. Okay. Um, I know. I know she needs food. She gonna get food soon. But... How do I... There you go. Ha <laughs> ha! Kabloom! Look, food! Yeah. What? Oh shit. I made that potion explode. Oh, well. So, she ends up meeting him, and she's very threatened by him, because even though he's very humble about a lot of stuff, um, he is actually a better chef than she is. And... Uh, I don't know, there's just all this stuff, and eventually a romance kind of blooms between them, as is usual and normal in most K-dramas, and any kind of drama, really. You know, you have two- you have a guy and a girl character, they tend to fall in love. Um, but it's really awesome because she has this issue with trusting people, too. Because <laughs> um, same thing kind of happens to her that happened with the other girl in the other drama that- is kind of similar but um you know she just kind of learned to not trust people because she's been betrayed one too many times by by people and so she doesn't really trust him and that's why it's called love myself for you because she's not sure if she should just continue being on her own or if it's okay to fall in love with him and so it's it's a really good drama I'm definitely rambling now, but it's a really, really fucking good drama. Like, that one is one of my favorite dramas. I absolutely love that drama. Um, and then after that is Dr. Crush, which uh, Shin Min Hee, I believe, is in that one. Um, eh, whatever food. God, you're so sassy, dude. Um, oh, hey, guys. What up, yo? Die. Mm, I'm gonna go in. No, I don't. I, uh, okay, I'll go in here first. Hey guys, what's up? Um. Anyways, so I don't want to kill that food. I really don't want to hit that food. It's making me nervous. 
Uh, so Dr. Crush is about this girl who w has always been deemed like a, a thug and a punk because she knows how to fight and like she was kind of a rebel and stuff. Um, her parents end up abandoning her and they give her up to her grandmother and she gets really, really close with her grandmother. And then eventually her grandmother gets some kind of tumor or something like that. She has to go and get surgery. And the surgeons end up killing the grandmother, but they... And it was because they were trying this new experimental kind of thing. And, like, something just goes very wrong, but somehow the surgeon doesn't get in trouble for it. And so it's basically her quest of revenge. So she becomes a doctor, mostly to try to get into the hospital and figure out a legal way to... Ah! to uh, make the dude pay. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. I knew that was coming. Um, and ah! Oh my gosh, man. <laughs> those freaking things. Yeah, they, those explodey guys are a lot tougher. Can I come back now? Thank you. you yes, I do. I do indeed live again. I am alive. Hey, you can't hit me through that wall, you dumbass. Um, anyways, so... That happens, and she ends up meeting this dude. Again, there's obviously some romance in there, but she meets this dude who kind of opens her eyes to the whole revenge thing, and she's still very set on it, and he kind of finds out what she's doing, but he ends up helping her. Because um, he ends up falling in love with her. And it's, it's really cute. It's really fucking awesome. Like, there's not as many... Ah, oh, I want that crown. Give me that crown. I want it. Get out of my way. Get out of my way. This could come in handy. Yes, it could. Um, oh shit, oh shit, get out. Oh god. Um, I forgot what I was saying, but it's really so- Oh, gimme- what are you doing hitting my crowd? Fuck you up, dude. Um, but yeah, no, it's really good. There's- oh, that's what I was saying. There's not as much action as I thought there would be, because in the very beginning, she's like beating dudes up left and right, and you kind of figured, like, maybe- just maybe she would beat a little- a few more people up because she's- she was deemed a thug in like the first three episodes. Like she can fight, she's got the skills for it and all this cool stuff. But there's actually not as much of that as- not as much action as I was thinking or hoping for. Um, but other than that, it is a very, very good drama. It's super awesome. It was probably definitely one of my favorites for the year. But my all-time favorite this time, this year, was Goblin, the Great and Lonely God, or the Lonely and Great God. Goblin was the most fantastic and most heartbreaking drama I have seen in a long time. It has Gong Yu in it, and I am madly in love with him now, um, but, oh god, it was so good. So that one is about this goblin, and it's really hard to get into what a Korean goblin it's is, fun. because... I'm sure that kind of goblin is different from... Oh shit, this is the death! Oh fuck, fuck, fuck. This isn't... I don't know. It's definitely not time. I'm running like fuck, dude. Oh shit, this is gonna be the most difficult thing ever. You just fucking kill everyone. Kill everyone, get out of there! Um... Oh shit, this is gonna be so hard. I forgot about death. Oh fuck. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. Ah! I don't even care about the crown right now. I need to just I just want my life. Um anyway, so he's this goblin and he the only way for him to die, he's basically cursed. He's immortal like no matter what. And the only way for him to die, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. There I go. I'm dead. <laughs> um the only way for him to die is for him to find his bride. So uh Eh, fuck, 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 fuck. Ah, death is right there! Oh my god! Just run, just run. I don't even care about no one. Kill them all. Get away from me. Fuck you. Oh god. Oh god. I don't like- I don't like these guys because they have long range and I don't hide by- Oh shit. Fuck you, death. Oh my god. This is the part where I'm gonna stop talking now because I can't- I can't do both of these things at the same time. This is difficult. I'm so- I'm terrible with the Valkyrie. Oh my god, get out of my way. Get out of my way. Get out of my way. Oh shit. <laughs> this is gonna be so hard with Valkyrie. This is why I like the long distance stuff. It's- it's nice. Anyways, so he has to find his bride in order to die, essentially. Um, 
And so he's lived for like centuries and he just can't seem to die. He can't find his bride and all this stuff. Um, he ends up saving this woman whose daughter is his bride, but he doesn't know that yet. So it's years later, she's like 17 or something like that, and uh, they meet. They end up meeting. She is his bride, but he doesn't quite know that yet still because he wants her to prove it. Oh my god, I'm dead. I'm dead. Fuck. <laughs> this is going to be so hard. Um, I don't want to yet. Death is right there. I need him to leave first. Death, fuck off. Ah! Uh, fine, I guess I'll- okay. I'm gonna go over here. There you go. Oh shit, get out of there. Um, so, yeah, it, it's just like, it's a really fucking good drama. Um, and it's really heartbreaking because he does end up falling in love with her. Uh, very much, but he can't be with her because if he- if he is- This is a little bit of a spoiler, but, um... If he does stay with her, then she has a higher chance of dying, essentially. Because her only purpose is to be alive so that he will die. Fuck, I'm dead. Oh god. Just keep going. Just go. Ah! Just go, just go. Oh shit. Eat the chicken! Eat the chicken! Eat the chicken! Fuck! No, that's not what I wanted. I didn't want to destroy the food. Oh shit. Oh my god. Oh, I'm dead anyways. So that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Just die. There you go. Hey, there you go. Oh, yes I will. Are you kidding me? Have you seen me? Have you met me? Hi, Miranda here. Or Mushra. Whatever. Oh, god death, you're right where I need to be. Get your ass over here. Um, so yeah, it's really awesome and really heartbreaking. There's a lot of really great themes in there, and I mean, it's it's definitely more than just that. The goblin also becomes friends with uh, a grim reaper, which makes for a very unlikely friendship because they both kind of hate each other. <laughs> so it's it's really comedic. It's super romantic. It's just like it's just oh, it's so fucking awesome. Fuck me. I know it could come in handy, but first I gotta get away from death. You die. Kill everyone. Kill everyone. Kill everyone. Kill death. Ah, you can't kill death. That's right. Death doesn't die. Okay. Um, out, 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 outy like a trouty. Uh, you die. And you die. And now I die. <laughs> Shit. Um, anyways, so that's my top one. My most disappointing one was definitely, uh, god, what the fuck is it called? It's, uh, Jealousy Incarnate. So, Jealousy Incarnate, uh, kinda, it has to do with, again, news reporters that tended to be the theme for whatever year this was made. It was actually made. I don't know what year it was made. I just know that I, uh, so close, that I rewatched a lot of this stuff this year. <sighs> okay, bye. Um, so anyways, super awesome dramas, but, um, Jealousy Incarnate was not, was not super awesome. There's, there's this chick and she's trying to be a reporter and there's this dude and he's always putting her down and he's just an asshole about everything and I really fucking hate him. Um, he ends up getting cancer and she knows this because she accidentally gropes his boob. She's also like super in love with him. Um... But she accidentally gropes his boob one day, and she feels the, l the lump in his chest, and she's like, Oh, you have breast cancer. And because uh, Korea's still a little not all the way fully there... Oh shit. Oh my god, get out of there. Um, and what I mean by there is, like, they, they ha they're in ways a little bit backwards. No offense, Korea. Um... But there's definitely not gender equality just yet, so it's very embarrassing, apparently, for him to have breast cancer. Shit. Um, so yeah, he like doesn't want to admit to it, and he's like super embarrassed about it, and so he denies it for a long time, and he almost dies, and all, there, there's all this shit that goes on. And, uh, I just, like, it's, it's a neat story, it's a neat idea, and a cool concept, but I didn't like it because, mostly because the guy is just a fucking asshole. Like, 
there's supposed to be a romance there because he does end up falling like madly in love with her and she's like the more that she gets to know him the more that oh shit uh, like the more that she gets to know him like yeah she kind of likes him but there are definitely times when she's like why are you such an asshole and he's just like i'm not an asshole i'm just a dude and whatever um so like it's kind of cute and kind of fucking stupid like, I just, I really fucking hated the guy. I didn't mind the the romance between them necessarily, but it's like he just would not let himself fall in love with her. And it's just because he's too proud. And it, was, it wasn't like the Pride and Prejudice kind of proud. It was just like the really stupid, like, you're just being a fucking idiot dude kind of proud. And um, part of the reason, too, why he falls in love with her is because he's dying. And he's just like, well, she loves me for who I am, asshole or not, so I'm going to love her back. And it's like, well, okay, that's cool, but at the same time, you're just you're just using her. And it, I, I don't know, it was just kind of, oh shit, death is that way. Oh shit, get out of my way. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Oh my god. Um, so I, I just didn't like the romance between the two of them. I didn't like how he treated her move. <laughs> um, I just didn't like it. I mean, there were, again, there were, like, concepts and stuff that were, that were really good and really cool, but in total, in general, I'm, I just wasn't a fan of their characters, because she let herself be essentially emotionally abused by him and manipulated by him because she loves him, like, no matter what, and, like, that's cool and all, but... She was just kind of an idiot about it, and he is an idiot about it. So, and this is this is a show that I just I just ended up not finishing it because towards the end I just didn't care. And like there is there is the nice guy dude. People oftentimes fall for you know like the second male lead. It's called second male lead syndrome, I guess. And I was definitely totally in love with him because he was very there for her and like completely and everything, and it was really cool. But. Um, she didn't love him and so it was just kind of dumb uh am i actually here i don't remember i'm gonna go to this one so anyways that was my whatever that was my k-drama slash taiwanese um dramas so for anime ah, you're still alive. oh yes i am hello Welcome, then, to the scene of your death. oh thanks thanks bro this almost looks like oh, an arena. ah almost huh Almost. Okay, boom! Get out of there! Uh, okay, so for animes, or on High School Host Club. This was one that I started watching actually- How? Oh, fuck you. This is one that I actually started watching, uh, before I left for Washington. Like, two years ago now almost. Where am I? <laughs> I lost myself. Um, so it- I, actually, I just rewatched it again this year because it, I fucking loved it so much and it was one of those uh, animes that was just really happy and like very cute and kind of slice of lifey and Nothing I love that kind of shit. So yeah, I ended up watching it and it was amazing again. Where the fuck am I? I keep losing myself. God damn it. Um, so yeah, that was- that's number five on my list. It was really super awesome. Number four on my list was Parasite the Maxim, which is- I think I've talked about it briefly before, but, uh, Parasite the Maxim is a really cool, like, uh, supernatural kind of alien-esque horror kind of thriller thing. I don't know how to describe it. Damn, I'm gonna die. <laughs> Yes, chicken, thank you. Shoot me right into that chicken. Ah, 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 don't hit me, no, don't hit me. You go fuck off. I don't like you. Um, and it, I mean, that one was really cool, just the idea of it and everything else, so. Really super rad. You're not dead yet? Fuck off. Um, it was really awesome, and I really liked it. Oh, shit! I don't like these dudes! Oh, shit, oh, shit, oh my gosh. Just kill them all. No, don't kill me. You all don't kill me. I kill all of you. Damn it, I'm dead. <laughs> um, so yeah, that one was really cool. I liked Parasite the Maxim. Uh, a lot of people said that it would have like a really sad ending, but it actually didn't. Like, they, I think I've talked about it before how... Fuck me! How it could have had a sad ending if... Uh, Alright, move me. Move me. Fuck you. Oh, there we go. 
Okay, cool. I do have full health. I'm just an idiot. And I'm bad at dodging and shit. Oh shit. Uh, shot. Cool. So that one was actually really good. It was really good. I really like horror. Um, I guess as an honorable mention, I can put Tokyo Ghoul on here because I re-watched Tokyo Ghoul this year and it's still one of my favorite animes, like ever. This time though, I watched it in English. I think the first time I watched it was in Japanese. And I'm pretty sure I've talked about that too. Uh, let's see, number three was Yuri on Ice because that one was just awesome and cute and I I love I love all of the characters. I don't I don't think I really have to talk too much about Yuri on Ice because most of y'all should know about it. If you don't, go and watch Yuri on Ice. It's on Crunchyroll. Uh, number two was The Future Diary. The Future Diary was crazy. It was super crazy. Like I dig that one. That one was really awesome. It was another horror one. Uh, these kids get these cell phones. And they get entered into this game where basically they each of their phones can tell the future in some way or something along those lines. Um, but they each have different things. So like, uh, I forget what her name is, but there's a girl who is like crazy creepy stalkery in love with the main guy character and her diary can see the future, but only his future. It can't see her future or anything else. His diary can see, like, everyone's future, just the future in general. Um, some people's journals can only see certain, certain kind of futures, like futures that directly correlate to their death, for instance, so they'll, they will know how to avoid their death or something like that. So each of them is, is a little bit different. Um, and basically, the last one, I forget exactly what it is exactly, but, uh, oh, come on, man. Um, but if they, basically, if they don't play the game, then each of them are gonna die one by one anyways. So they might as well play the game and get it done with. Uh, there's a lot of supernatural stuff that's going on in there and it's it's really cool it's really really rad and it is like a mind fuck because it also has some time travel put in there oh shit hi <laughs> i forgot you guys get mad uh yeah there's definitely some time travel in there and it's it's just a the thrill ride like it's fucking crazy it's so good it's so good um and then my top anime of this year was Toradora. I fucking love that one. It's so, oh, it's so adorable and cute. I've already talked about this one, so I'm not gonna, really gonna go into it that much, but it's amazing. And then, um, because I didn't watch too much anime this year, same thing, um, I don't actually have a least favorite one for that, or the biggest disappointment or anything like that. Like, I, I was pretty pleased with all of the animes that I've seen so far, um, however, I think just for the moment, probably my least favorite anime right now is Dead Man Wonderland, and that's just because I, I'm just getting into it. I think I'm like five episodes into it, but so far it's not catching my attention as much as I would like to. It's, it's pretty crazy. It's a really interesting, uh, really, really interesting, uh, what is it called? Concept but it's just not catching my, my interest as much as I would like for it to. So, you know, I like that one, but not as much as I like the others. She is pretty fast, actually. Look at her run. Uh, so I don't really have any super dislikes this year, but if I had to say, it would probably be Dead Man Wonderland. Um, and then for games, my, on my top five, number five is going to be Cuphead. Uh, it's in number five and not number one because... I will tell you why soon, but as much as I love this game, it's a little too difficult for me. I'm much more of a casual gamer, and so it's a little bit out of my league. Um, I play it on occasion, but I don't do very well, and I get really frustrated with it, so that's part of the reason why... Yeah, 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 I know. Um, so that, anyways, that's part of the reason why... Oh, shit! I'm gonna die! <laughs> there, I'm dead. I'm dead now. 
So that's part of the reason why it's on number five. But it is a fantastic game. You guys should all play it, even if you're not good at games. At least buy it and support support the artists because what they did to make the game is incredible. I have the utmost respect for them. Um, they're fucking awesome. Uh, like another key. Uh, let's see what else is there. Animal Crossing is number four. I put it at number four because I got it a couple months ago, actually, and I've been playing it every single day like crazy. Um, however, sadly, there's not too much to do in the game. I mean, it's definitely a game that you should and- or could- I can't even speak. It's definitely a game that you should and can play every single day. But... Depending on what you want out of video games, it's good or it's not. Um, I still am very much a story-driven kind of game player. I love games that have a story. And this is a really cute game because you are the mayor of a town and you create your town according to whatever you want. I'm specifically talking about New Leaf. I have never played any other Animal Crossing game before this one. Yeah, I know. Um, so, like, it's fun, and it's really cool, but I really only play it for maybe, like, two hours a day tops, and right now I'm just trying to pay off my latest house expansion, and I'm kind of just flipping between paying for house expansions and then doing a public works project, house expansion, public works project, and in the beginning, I played it like crazy. Every single day, I would play it for, like, ever, for hours and hours and hours, like, so many hours. And I would try to make... Oh shit, I don't know. But I'm fucked! But I would try to... Basically... Oh shit. Oh, okay, good. I need to get out of here. Get out of this fucking crowded mess. Oh shit. Oh my god. Oh fuck. Ah! No, don't hit me. No, don't hit me. I need to get rid of this guy. No, I don't want any. I don't want any. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. Ah! Okay. Shit. That was scary. Um, so anyways, Animal Crossing, super fun, but not the most entertaining game. If, if, if I can, if it's okay to say that. I don't know if it is, because I know that there are a lot of, like, crazy Animal Crosser peoples that are just, like, super enjoying it and loving it. Can I come back now? Thanks. I want to try to get you. Do I actually have to hit you? I do. Fuck me. Shit, shit, shit. Uh, I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you, bro. Ha ha ha. I'm gonna get you still. Yeah. See that? I got you. You cunt. Pardon my language. Um, so Animal Crossing is really cool. But it's on number four because even though I play it every day and I fucking love that game, it's not a game that I would be like, yo, this is the best game ever. You know, it's just kind of like a, a good game. It's a really good game. Uh, on number three is The Lion's Song, which I already played. And I haven't played through all of it. I do intend to play through all of it eventually, but I've only played through the first chapter. If you guys want to see that, I already made a video series on it. Um, just the first part, like I said. But, yeah. You guys can check that out. You'll see automatically that I just- I fucking love that game. It's a great game. Um, let's see. And then there is... Child of Light, which is always my favorite. I'm gonna die so hard. Ah, fuck. There I go. <laughs> um, but yeah, Child of Light is always, always, always one of my favorite games. So that's- that makes the number two spot, and then besides that, fuck me, that guy is angry. All of these dudes are angry. Yes, I know, but I can't do that right now. I need to kill these dudes. Gotta kill all the dudes. Uh, Breath of the Wild is number one, just because that was the best game, I think, of the entire year for me. It was awesome in so many ways, and I am the biggest Zelda fan. So, yeah, Breath of the Wild definitely takes the cake. My least favorite game, y'all can probably guess with this one, maybe, if you've seen what I've been playing, um, is Hope Lake. I fucking hated Hope Lake. Hope Lake can suck a dick. Hope Lake, I was actually looking forward to. I really like point-and-click adventure games, and I really like um, stuff where you, like, find shit and all that cool stuff, but this 
game was redonkulous. Like, I don't know if it's all... I don't know if they just do it nowadays where they... I don't know. I don't know. You guys can watch me get frustrated over it. And it's it's not like I get mad at it. I just get frustrated over it. But um, I've decided to just not play that game because that game is dumb. So, yeah. That's my least favorite one. And then as for movies, kind of the same thing. I did not really watch too many movies this year. I am gonna die. Um, yeah, 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 I know. A little while longer, I know. Oh shit, nope, nope, nope. Just need to kill all y'alls. Anyways, so movies. Uh, for number five, I'm gonna put Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2. And I'm doing 1 and 2 because I watched them in the same day, around the same time. And so for me, they're one giant movie. The second one in particular was my favorite, which I think is might be unpopular opinion because I've, I feel like I've heard people like the first one more, but I actually like the second one more. So, you know, whatever. Unpopular opinion time, that's fine. I don't really care. Uh, Y'all need to die. Oh, I died. I died, of course. That's fine. Bring me back. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's kick some butt. Uh, let's see, what else is there? Uh, Atomic Blonde is number four, because that one was awesome, and it had a killer soundtrack, yo. Like, fucking amazing soundtrack. I loved that movie. Like, that movie was fucking awesome. And she, do she does Charlie's Theron. She does all, all of her own stunts. That was amazing. It was super good. Very enjoyable. Um... After that, it was Bridget Jones's Baby. I have- I don't want to say I've been waiting for this movie to come out, but I've kind of been waiting for this movie to come out. I always felt like there should have been a third Bridget Jones movie. I've never really read the books. I listened to the first audiobook, or the audiobook for the first book, um, and it's really funny. It's actually really similar to the movie. Not entirely the same, but pretty good nonetheless. Um... But yeah, so Bridget Jones' baby was just the same regular old Bridget Jones nonsense silliness, and it was super awesome. I, I love that. I just love Bridget Jones in general. She's awesome. Um, after that, number two was Beauty and the Beast. I, I bought the DVD for that one, and I've seen it multiple times now, and I just fucking love it. It's super enjoyable. I actually really like the new songs. Um, the first time I saw it, I didn't like the inclusion of the new songs, just because I liked- I, I had a bias- a natural bias towards the first Disney version of it. Um, so I just didn't like it at first, but the more I thought about it, the more I was like, these are- ah! Pretty great songs. Pretty great everything. Like, it, it was just really, really good. Um, so yeah, I ended up buying it. It is now definitely one of my favorite movies. That's why it's on spot number two. And besides that, the number one top movie of the year for me, personally, is uh, Train to Busan. Train to Busan is fucking epic. Oh my god. The best zombie movie in the entire world. Like, like hands down. It's a Korean horror movie. Uh, Gong Yu is in it again, and goddamn, I love it. I love him. I love everything about all of that. Just, uh, it's all just fucking wonderful. Just so amazing. Such great, such a great movie. Um, it's like it has it has the tension. It has the the thrilling aspect. It's got the horror aspect. It's just, it's got everything. Like, it's so fucking good. It's so good. And it's like, it, I fucking cry every single time that I watch it. I fucking cry. I bawl like a little bitch. A little baby bitch. That's what I do. I just cry my eyes out at the end. It's just, it's so, it's so good. And it like, it really gets into your skin and like, oh, it's so good. Um, it's not like gory and like disgusting like all the other zombie movies, but that's, that's I, honestly what I love about it, you know? I, I, I'm not super huge on gore, um, and it's bloody for sure, but it's not like super duper gory, and that's what, that's another thing that I really like about it. And then the most disappointing movie of the year, obviously, was Death Note. The live action one, because, you know, you just can't, you just don't, you don't take out the bag chip scene, and you don't, you don't, 
mm, there was just so much wrong with that movie. I don't even want to get into it, but I watched it because I knew it was going to be terrible and it was worse than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> so anyways, that's my last one. And in the next episode, I will be talking about my bookish plans. All right, I'll see you guys then. Bye.